Hey everybody, my name's Todd. And my name's Mahila. And welcome to The Way Kids. <laughs> Whether you're watching this at home or in a class at church, we are so excited to be together. Let's start off with a game today. Yeah. Our friends Mal and John are gonna give you some instructions and show you how it's done. Afterwards, you can either press pause to play the game yourself or you can continue on to the story for the day. Listen, if you don't have some of the same supplies as us, get creative. There's lots of fun ways you can play these games with different items. <laughs> See you soon. See ya. Hey kids, welcome to Minute to Win It with Mal and John. I'm Mal. And I'm John, and today we're playing a game called Defying Gravity. So how does it work? So for this game, we're gonna try and keep all of these balloons off the floor for one minute. And if a balloon touches the floor or pops, that balloon is out and we're gonna keep trying to keep the other balloons up off the ground. And at the end of the minute, we'll see who has kept the most balloons off the ground. So am I allowed to hold the balloons? You cannot hold the balloons. <sighs> It'd be so much but easier if I could. You can hit the balloons with your feet, with your head. Shoulders. Shoulders. Knees and toes. Knees and toes, both arms, ears, eyes. Walls, yeah. Walls not okay. the floor. Yeah, if they touch the floor, they're out. They're out. Awesome, okay. And there's only one rule. To, to win? John, no, to, to keep your hands to, to keep yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. We'll try our best. We'll try our best. It might feel a little crazy. Who knows go. All right, okay. are you ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. So on the on go, we just toss them in the air. Okay. Three, two, one, go. go. Oh, I lost one. I lost two. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's all this on is, me now. This is not going well for me. It all fell apart. What happened? Um. Well, oh, it was I'm going. It was going well, and then it went really poorly for a bit. Oh, I'm getting so tired doing this. You guys ever have those times where? You some... felt like you were doing really well, and then you look over and someone's beating you, and it's easy for them. I need some perseverance if you haven't, for this. This is one. how it feels. What's the time? Oh, you got time. That's cheating. I couldn't keep my head to myself. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not cheating. Woo! Good job. Nice. Well, it's 3-1. My first point. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Mal, excellent job. Excellent win. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey friends, I hope you're ready for some adventure because this big, beautiful world is full of them. You might even say all of creation is wonder full. From the Northern Lights to the Great Barrier Reef, our world is full of so many wonders. All month long, we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the most amazing wonders in the natural world. God created a wonderful world for us to explore and enjoy together. The Northern Lights are always there even though we can't always see them. God is kind of like this, but even better, because God is always available, no matter what time it is or where we are. Even though we can't see God all of the time, God is always there. Today, we are learning about hope. Hope is knowing for sure that God's promises are true. Did you notice God helping you throughout the day in big and small ways ever? Me too. When we really start to notice how much God is with us and how far God's love reaches, it's hard not to feel grateful. It's easy to feel amazed at how wonderful God is. And when that happens, worship happens. Let's learn more about hope with Grow TV. Well, I'm here, I'm here. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, 
talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Cool TV. Sorry I'm late, y'all, but it finally came. Yes, it is finally here. I can't believe it. I've been waiting forever. Wait, do you not know what this is? Oh, you're in for quite the treat. This right here is the latest technology. Tippity top of all the tech. This, my fellow chicken nuggets, is the VRW. The VR Wonderful. For those of you who do not know what this is, let me clue you in. It says here on the box, the VR Wonderful device has the ability to show you all the greatest and most beautiful natural wonders of the world. And not just show you, but teach you some of the most wonderful things that God has created. Now my best friend Jada sent it to me because apparently she wants me to broaden my horizons. Whatever that means. Now I'm not one for trying out new things, but this sounds pretty cool. And I'm always up to travel. Ready to open it? Here we go. Wow, <laughs> look at this thing. This is slick. I, I bet you this is what robots wear at night to keep the light from getting in their eyes. But where's the... Oh no! I think it's missing parts. Oh man, it is missing parts. There's no way this is gonna work. Let me call Jada. <clears throat> call Jada. Hey Carl. Jada, it's so good to see you. I was just telling the kids that I smell like wrong dog. What? Wrong dog? Yep. What's, what's wrong dog? Oh, nothing major. It's just the thing that you sent me is missing some parts. Wait, where? What What are you talking about? The VR Wonderful. I got it, but it's missing the wings. How am I supposed to see anything wonderful if this thing can't fly? <laughs> hey, what's so funny? I ain't kidding. We need to return this thing. Carl, the VR stands for virtual reality. You put the headset on and there's tiny screens in there that help you feel like you're actually there. Wait, so I'm not actually leaving? No. I already packed up everything and told my mama it's gonna be gone for like a month. Sorry, at least you can try it out now though. True. So, how does it work? Pretty simple actually. All you gotta do is put the headset on and say rubber baby buggy bumpers. Okay. Rubber bugger baby dumpers. Rubber dubbered TV, rubber dubbered turpers. Can you see it yet? I don't think so. Maybe it's broke. <gasps> oh my goodness. What is this? What are you seeing? It's like blue and green lights in the sky. But it's nighttime. It's like if you took a giant box of glittery shoelaces and shook them in the sky. Oh, that's the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis? Also known as the Northern Lights. Aren't they pretty? Jada, besides the menu at Chick-fil-A, <laughs> this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. How do they make this? Who? NASA. Was it NASA or was it Disney? This seems like something Disney might have done. It's just so beautiful. Or this was like edited on some like computer for like a show or something. Carl, you know God made this, right? Excuse me? God created the Northern Lights. Humans can create some really cool stuff, but you know, God makes the stuff that really is wonderful. That is incredible. I can hardly believe it. I had no idea God created something so magnificent. Right? That's why I wanted to get this for you, so you could continue to realize not only just how great God is, but encourage you to keep worshiping God as well. Thanks, Jada. I mean, I guess we can kind of all forget to worship God sometimes. But to be completely honest, I have a hard time understanding what that looks like. You know, like, worshiping God. Oh, yeah, I totally understand. I like to think of worship like this, to show appreciation and love toward God. So that may look like praying, singing, dancing, resting, or even our thoughts. There are millions of ways we can honor and give glory to God through our life. I guess you're right. I think that's amazing. <laughs> this is so cool. I wonder how those lights do that. Well, it's complicated, but it has a lot to do with the sun. The sun? Yep. There are particles that travel all the way from the sun to the earth. Some of those particles bounce off the earth's atmosphere, but some peek through. That leads to the brilliant colors floating through the sky. Never knew God could do that, did you? I love it. It's stuff like this that makes me understand Psalms more. I, I think it's pronounced Psalms, but go ahead. Like in Psalms 31, it says, From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watched all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, 
who considers everything they do. Oh, I like that a lot. How cool is it that God watches over all of us? I don't know about you, but that makes me feel better. Right? That's what I'm saying. Seeing those northern lights made me kind of think, maybe God does have everything under control. Even though my life can feel very out of control sometimes. Like a baby goat driving a monster truck, you know? I think so. It's easy to get distracted and forget that having trust and faith in God is the most important thing we can do in this life. I mean, think about it. Even though there are things like the northern lights, oceans, mountains, animals, planets, and galaxies, in God's eyes, we are more important than all of that. That makes no sense. I mean, I know I'm beautiful, but I don't know if I'm more beautiful than the Borealis. Aurora Borealis. That's what I said. <laughs> right. Anyway, Carl, the Psalm 139 tells us, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We also can't forget what it says in Psalm 33. We wait and hope for the Lord. God is our help and our shield. God isn't a shield. God is, well, God. Well, yes, of course. But what the writer of this psalm is telling us is that just like a shield, God will keep us safe and protect us. Even when things don't look great, God is reminding us through this psalm that we can always put our hope in God. And what better way to worship than to express this hope that God gives us? You know what? You're absolutely right. I love that. Sometimes there's things around us that just seem hopeless. Like maybe things can't be made right or like fixed, but verse 5 reminds us of how full the earth is for his love. It reminds us that God loves helping restore things, setting things right. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. You got it. Thanks, Shana. So, um, do you want to try? Um, no, it's okay. I don't need to. Okay, thanks. <laughs> hey, all you wonderful kids. Today's big idea is so special, and it is we can worship by putting our hope in God. So let's shout it out to the Northern Lights. So ask an adult, we have to face north, which way north is? We have to, I think, I think it's this way for me, okay? So I'm gonna face this way, all right? All right, are you ready? One, two, three. We can worship by putting our hope in God. Woo! Excellent job, everybody. Great job. Now make sure you do not miss next week's episode of Grow TV because Carl is gonna be learning about a special mountain. All right, we'll see you then. Bye, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Let's recap this week's lesson. When Jesus was on earth, Jesus faced many temptations and uncomfortable situations that required God's help. And just like God helped Jesus in those situations and gave him peace, God can do the same for us too. Life doesn't always look the way you think it will. Sometimes it doesn't even look the way you hoped it would. But because we know God is always there for us, we can worship by putting our hope in God. Hope isn't a wishful thinking, like dreaming about having ice cream for dinner. Hope is more like a peaceful place where you know everything is going to be okay because God is near and because there's nothing that can keep us away from God's love. When we put our hope in God, we get stronger in every kind of situation that might come along. God will always love us and be with us. And that leads us into our big idea for today, which is we can worship by putting our hope in God. Let's take some time to learn the new memory verse for this month with some actions. I'll do it first and my friend Mal here will copy and you can do it with her. So everyone stand on up. You ready? I praise you. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works, your works are wonderful. Are wonderful. I know that. I know that. Full well. Full well. 
Psalm 139. Psalm 139. 14. 14. Okay, we've all done it once, but we're gonna try it again all together. Okay. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 139, 14. Great job. Let's close in prayer together. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you that even though we can't see you, we know you're always there and that you love us. Amen. All right, thanks everyone for a great week in our series, Wonderful. We hope to see you again next week. If you're at home, we have included a few discussion questions, a coloring page, and a worship playlist. If you'd like to get these, just ask your parents for help and click the link below. And remember, our North Van Kids Camp is starting this week. And our camp for Strathcona is the following week. And there's still time to sign up and have fun with us. Ask your parents for help to register online. Thanks for being with us today and we'll see you next week.